Let's talk about gardening. But first, do these coveralls make me look fat? <gasps> Never mind. moving on. But Cody, you just went through a winter storm with negative 37 degree wind chills and you're standing in a snowdrift. I know, but under this snowdrift here is a raised bed that Shelly's been harvesting greens from up to about oh, a little over a week ago. So I don't know if there's still gonna be anything alive under here. My only hope is, is that maybe the snow covered it soon enough in the storm that it insulated it, kept a little bit of warmth in there and kept some of that stuff alive. That would be really awesome to be here at the end of December and be able to harvest some greens and have a fresh salad off of the homestead. So to see what's under here, I'm gonna have to start digging. Now the beauty of video is that I can be in two places at once. And you might be thinking that this is not the right time of the year to be talking about gardening, but this is a very important time of the year to be talking about gardening. And I'm not just talking about growing things like in our raised bed or growing things in a hoop house, because as you can see here, we don't even use this thing. First of all, I wanna start right here, and this is our strawberry patch. So obviously it's under snow, you can't really see anything, but it's this rectangle here that's by the hoop house. You can see some of the plants poking up through the snow right here. This strawberry patch should have been covered before that really cold snap came. Really, really cold temperatures and the constant freezing and thawing can damage next year's fruit buds and the roots and the crowns of the strawberry plants. Like most of us homestead growers aren't replanting plants every year. I know a lot of commercial growers replant every year. And we try to replant about every other year because your berries are gonna be better if you do it that way. And we're hoping too, again, that this snow blanket here did enough to insulate them a little bit from the cold and from being as extreme temperatures as what we got in that storm. Once this thaws out and it should within about the next couple days, it's supposed to get like 60 degrees in a couple days. It's nuts. So once this thaws off of here, we're gonna cover this with straw and then it'll be able to withstand some more temperature fluctuation and really cold temperatures. Hey, how's the digging coming up there? I've got it, you just keep talking. Okay. So impatient. So next up, right beside our strawberry patch is our asparagus patch. And something that, again, should have been done before the winter really got started was these plants should have been cut down. Now this is not quite as big of a deal as the strawberries being covered before the cold comes. The main thing with this is they just need to be cut down before it starts warming up again for two reasons. First reason being is that asparagus beetles will overwinter in the foliage of asparagus plants. So we need to cut these off and burn the plants so that we don't get an asparagus beetle infestation. The other thing about it is, is that I don't wanna to have to try to harvest asparagus from a patch like that. So you wanna clean that up before they start growing in next spring. So the very best thing to do is to do it before it gets really cold and miserable to have to come out here and cut this. And obviously right now it is just like covered in snow. I'm not gonna be able to do that right now. I'm gonna wait till the snow melts, then I'll come and cut these down. Hey, are you done up there yet? Come on, get moving. Just be patient can't find good help these days. So while we're talking about the garden, I wanted to talk real quick about what's going on in our cold cellar. We've got onions in these crates right here. We've got plenty of onions right here. We've got sweet potatoes in these crates here, garlic, red and white potatoes here, and then winter squash here. The winter squash we bought from an Amish farm because ours completely failed this year. Now, the thing is about the potatoes and sweet potatoes is that we're seeing that, you know, we have a decent amount here but that we're gonna be running low by the end of this winter, so, and we'll probably run out. So Shelly's been supplementing with more rice and noodles than she has in previous years. We're just finding out that our children are growing up, getting older, and eating a lot more food. And this isn't all the food that we have put away. We've got carrots stored in the refrigerator down here. We've got our canned goods. So we do have other food, but one of our main staples for winter food to go along with the meat and everything else is potatoes and sweet potatoes and squash. So we're just seeing that next year, we're gonna really have to up our game in the garden and I hope you guys stick around to see what we're gonna grow and how much we're gonna grow. Hey, are you about done out here? Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm still working. Whatever. The other thing that we're working on for our garden during the winter is our compost piles. That was soup that Shelly made for a Christmas dinner that uh, she used a pot like this with a thick bottom and put it in the fridge overnight and the thick bottom kept it warm and it soured. So the chickens get a feast. 
These chickens in here are on deep bedding. So every once in a while, once there starts to be a lot of manure on the top, I put another layer of either hay or straw in here. We can use wood chips, leaves, so whatever we can get a hold of. And this will get layered and layered and layered and will make beautiful compost for our garden. We do kind of the same idea for the cows. Here in Maddie's stall, I've been layering hay in there. I got a whole bunch of hay for really cheap, cheaper than I can get straw, so I've been using that. And out here in the corral area where I've got her round bale and her water, I also layer that with hay or straw. And what I do to help keep her clean, because I gotta keep her pretty clean for milking, is I'll just scoop up the patties, and then I've been making a pile right here with those, and that has some hay and straw mixed in. And then I need to be scooping this and putting it on our compost pile. But my tractor has a flat tire, so it's like actually leaking around the valve stem. So for now, that pile over there will just keep growing. So right here are our two compost piles. And what we do basically is we work on building one for one year so it's like full. And then we leave that one sit, and then we start working on another one. So next spring, I'll be spreading this compost here on the garden. All right, well, I think that's enough for the garden stuff for now. Let's go up there and see if I'm done digging the snow off of that raised bed because I really want to see if there's some fresh greens in there that we can eat. Hey, are you done up there yet? I'm working on it. I mean, if you want it done so fast, come up here and do it yourself. Fine, I'll come do it myself. You're the one with a snow shovel. I've got to use Izzy's little shovel to clear over here. That shovel will work just fine. Just use it and work on that side. I'm just gonna quick get this side finished up and you can finish over there and then I'm out. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind doing it. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a little bit of snow. I'm just gonna quick shovel it off of here and you can go do whatever you wanna do. Go make me a latte or something. Okay, now I'll go do that. Okay, that thing's cleared. I bet Shelly's gonna wanna see if there's anything good under there yet. Let's go get her. Hey Shelly, I've got it all cleared. Do you wanna see if there's anything under there? Yeah, I'll be there. Here comes the moment of truth. I told Shelly to bring out a bowl and a knife because we're gonna get some salad, right? Okay. <laughs> I have faith that there's something left in there. Uh, I think it's frozen. Okay, let's look. Some of this stuff could maybe be salvaged, but I don't know if it's <laughs> worth it. The arugula for sure is completely gone. But wait, the snow wasn't as thick on this end, so let's go check in the other end. Actually, that's not too bad. That doesn't look too bad. I mean, this lettuce is still totally edible. This is like a perfectly good piece of lettuce right here. Nice. All right, put it in the bowl. <laughs> the bowl of faith. It was negative 11 degrees with a negative 37 wind chill. It was so freezing cold. And like this lettuce is totally untouched. This right here is totally fine. Nice. Ouch. That's cilantro, isn't it? Ah, there's cilantro that made it. <laughs> oh my word. I mean, here's some that did it, but like this stuff. Show me your salad. That was a lot of fun to find something in there. It's incredible that it survived that, but it did. So, hey, we get a salad in the end of December, right after a winter storm. Because we're more than farmers. That sounds like something you actually would say. <laughs> <laughs> just be quiet. Because I really just love salads. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> 